Hello there, fight friends. MMA Andy Cotterill here with Zach Pow Pow Powell here, uh, just a few days removed from his fight at, U at Unified MMA 55 in Toronto, Ontario. Zach, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me, Andy. So you're at the gym. It's uh, it's now the Tuesday we're talking. You're fighting Friday night. Tell me about a day, a Tuesday, like just uh, two or three days before your fight. Is it? It's clearly you're not doing any hard training like at that at this point, are you? Um, well, I feel pretty good, and I just hit pads pretty hard with DMARC, so, like, I, uh, I don't know, like, I don't train hard, like, no contact and stuff, like, I cut mm -hmm. that out a week before the fight just to not get injured, but I still like to, like, push my, my threshold and, like, get my, make sure, like, my lungs are still good and my power is yeah. still there, and, uh, it's all still there, so that's good. Of course, of course. Uh, this fight at Unified is a as a middleweight fight, so I'm willing to bet you probably don't have too much weight to cut, do you? Uh, I cut about twenty, cutting about twenty pounds. Wow, I didn't think you had that much to lose. You were looking really trim last time I saw you. Yeah, I'm trim at two hundred five now for some reason. Nice. Yeah. Before we get too far into the conversation, would you mind just taking a minute and just introducing yourself to the fans who are watching who might not be familiar with you? Yeah, well, my name is Zach Powell. Uh, everyone just calls me Pow Pow here in Niagara or wherever. Uh, I moved to Niagara Top Team about four years ago, but I'm originally from Quebec, and that's where I started my journey, like training martial arts in Quebec uh, 10 years ago. Um, I trained at Pat Note MMA and Evolution uh, BJJ, and I uh, just decided to move out here because this is the gym for me. Uh, yeah. Back when I moved here, like there was a lot of like up and coming guys that weren't established yet, like uh, Romero and AJ and Jazz. And uh, mm -hmm. since then, they've they're now pretty much established and like the, some of the best in Canada. But I just knew the first time I trained here that this is what the gym was going to become the best gym in Canada. It, it, it must be pretty apparent that when you go into a place like that, you said you knew right away. And you're not the only one. Like Kevin came with you basically at the same time, and Alana came from the West Coast, and fighters are coming from all across the country. What is it about Niagara Top Team that makes you just have that conversation with yourself and say, "Hey, this is this is going to be my home." Um, well, I've never seen a group of coaches so dedicated and focused and putting all their energy uh, into the sport. Um, a lot of gyms like they'll focus a lot on the recreational programs and they're going to have a hard time finding the balance between a pro team and a rec team and building those programs. But at, at Niagara Top Team, it was clear from the start that the pro team is something they put a lot of energy and effort in, into making sure, like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, everyone's reaching their goals as professionals. And um, also the coaches have goals as coaches, which is huge. Like, we need that. And... We're pretty comparable uh, to the way practices run to the big gyms out in the States. Like people like AJ will go train at Killcliff. It's like a huge gym for MMA in the world and practice is exactly the same. There's just a bit more bodies. And mm -hmm. so yeah, it's just just you, you get that feeling here of like, oh okay, yeah, this is this is real. Like this feels real. It doesn't feel like it's just training. It's it's training for professionals. What does your planning process look like when you're getting ready for a fight like this? How much of it is you? How much of it is your coaches? How much of it is other stuff? Uh, just sit down with my coaches and lay out what we want to do and game plan and then execute that game plan in the gym for the amount of time we had. Um, like, we didn't have much time for this fight. It's pretty short notice. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, like, the whole goal was just staying ready and staying in shape. And then when we got this offer and this opportunity, then we we just game plan and we know what we want to do. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much. I it. mentioned in my uh, most recent Sunday update that when I found out that your fight against Mac Larson was canceled, I was pretty disappointed because that to me was going to be one of the highlight fights of the event. But now this is even a, a bigger and potentially better fight for you, Mark Holm, teammate of uh, Dreykus Duplessis, who is fighting Sean Strickland for the UC middleweight title that's a pretty big name opponent and could be potentially a really big feather in your cap. Tell me how you said short notice, how did this whole fight came about and, and how did the decision uh, come to you? Well, it started with like the Mac Larson fight, as you said, and then Mac, uh, unfortunately had to pull out. Um, no comment on that. It's whatever. Uh, but it was a big fight Canadian wise. So it's like probably two of the best prospects in Canada going up against each other, which was big. Uh, but then we got, a couple offers on the table and we just took the biggest name. We took Mark Hume and 
this is a big fight internationally now and the co event. Mm-hmm. But, um, so we know there's going to be eyes on it. And that's why we took that fight because we're ready to steal the show. Like at, at this point, the way we see it is I can, if like I'm UFC ready. So a guy like Mark, I can go out there and beat him. And speaking of UFC ready and big eyes watching you, of course, as we all know that Dana White and his uh, Looking for a Fighter TV show is going to be at Unified watching your fight. He's going to be cage side. Probably UFC matchmaker Sean Shelby will be there as well. Is there any added pressure making sure uh, that you're going to be performing well for, for their eyeballs? No, it's just another fight. It's just added motivation. There's no pressure. Let's mm-hmm. go out there and do my thing. Pressure comes in many forms and, and shapes. And you had a lot of pressure on you in the past year in the form of a sort of, uh, you know, you had to have a conversation with yourself about what you wanted out of your life. You took some time off. I don't think you were happy with where you were. Just talk a little bit about that, about, about, you know, what was happening with you and what was the, uh, the, the thing that instigated this newfound passion for your mixed martial arts career? Um, I think I was just like, I just saw myself not going anywhere in the sport at some point. Like I've been in it for like nine at that point i was in it for like nine years and i just like think of my performances in my last two fights and like although they are good fighters uh they're not ufc level fighters and i didn't feel like i was on the path to be where Mm -hmm. i wanted to be because my goals in the sport were um just to make it at the highest level um so i took a bit of time off and I was thinking about just not fighting anymore because my whole goal behind fighting is being the best in the world. Uh, mm-hmm. But looking back, like I just didn't have my mentality straight. Uh, I wasn't putting all my energy and focus into training, even getting ready for those last two fights. I think I put a lot too much emphasis on losing that fight. I should have never lost to, to Dario and be at BFL. Uh, I think that I let that get to me too much, like losing that perfect record, like losing that. Oh, it, it just hurt a lot. Um, so thinking back on it, like I had more of a, like, um, I can't really find the word in English. I think defeatist or like negative mentality were like sure. yeah. defeated by, by things where, um, I really had no control over really. Like when I think back about that fight against Dario, like I went out there and I put on a good performance and I think it was pretty clear that I, I came out on top and the, unfortunately the outcome wasn't that. Uh, but I still grew as a as a fighter that day, and um, yeah, uh, my mentality has switched a lot since. I look at things with way more gratitude now. I'm way more focused in the room. I'm way more consistent with my training, and when it comes to the things outside of the gym, like I'm not cutting corners, and uh, I think that shows a lot because, like now, I'm competing with guys like AJ and Mike Malat on a regular basis, and I give them hard mm-hmm. rounds. And I even have like Mikey tell me like. Uh, we had a short conversation the other day, but he's like, I'm going to go out there this weekend. I'm going to get in the top 15. You're going to get in the UFC. Next year, I see myself winning the title, hold it for a few years, and then you're going to come along. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy, Mike. I'm like, that's fucking sick. And he's like, bro, it's real, bro. Like, it's I saw it with TJ and Cody. Garbrandt happened. And, like, I hope it doesn't happen that way for us where we don't fight. But, like, I mm-hmm. can see us both holding that title. I'm like, yeah. And, like, a year and a half ago, like Mikey wouldn't have told me that. Like I wasn't the same level I am now. Mm-hmm. I saw a video clip that Mike posted, Mike Malott, where he said that a year and a half ago you were a rest round, and that's yeah. changed. And he was he was, you know, swearing to himself almost. I mean, you're such a challenge for him now. That's got to feel pretty good for you and motivating, knowing that a high caliber fighter like Mike Malott is is having those thoughts about you. Yeah, it means a lot. Like. Like, to me, Mikey is just a future welterweight champion. Like, it's just, it's not, it's just a matter of time. Like, that's where he's going to be. Like, he's going to compete for that title. And I think mm-hmm. he's going to win it. And the same thing for AJ. Like, he's going to compete for that Bellator title. And I'm pretty sure he's going to win it. So, like, training with, like, two potential world champions and keeping up with them is just an eye-opener. And it just mm-hmm. shows to me that I'm putting the right work in. About a minute and a half ago, you mentioned a couple words. You mentioned, uh, you know, your, your mental focus, and you mentioned the word gratitude. And a few years ago, these were things that that wasn't really addressed by fighters. I mean, they worked on your physicality, you worked on your skills, you worked on your cardio, conditioning, all that kind of stuff. But the, the the mental fortitude was not really there. And yet, 
these days, it seems like it's really common. I just spoke with Sir City. I published my interview with him today, and he talked about his gratitude journal and how much he effort and focus he puts into that. Is there anything that you do, Zach Powell, as an individual or with Niagara Top Team, where you make sure that that part of the game is addressed and, and, and looked at as, as something that's important to focus on? Uh, like, I'll write things down and I'll, like, um, I'll, like, have journals and stuff but i think the bigger thing on my end that i've changed is if i have negative thoughts now or like being down on myself i catch myself doing it and i correct it right away uh mm -hmm. whether it's fighting or my day-to-day -day life uh like it's something i'm practicing way more now um like before like if this opponent switch would have happened like a year or two ago i probably would have been in a tough spot not seeing mm -hmm. the opportunity in front of it and now like i'm just so motivated and happy to be fighting a guy at that level in front of dana like i'm grateful for it i'm the the mm -hmm. challenge is just a huge opportunity and it makes me happy and like like i don't know before i'd probably lose sleep over it and i'm sleeping like a baby man like i'm just can't wait to go perform in front of dana well, speaking of that, it, it is such a huge opportunity because a lot of fighters in, in your situation around the world, you're fighting sort of the regional circuit, even Unified MMA. It's a really big show in Canada, and it's on UFC Fight Pass, but you never know who's watching, right? And the fact that Dana White, UFC president, Sean Shelby, right there, cage side, watching you fight, that's got to be really encouraging and exciting for you. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is, like, basically a contender series fight for me at this mm -hmm. point. It, it's just the opportunity we've been waiting for forever so and like this can lead to so much like those, those i remember like mickey gall getting signed and he blew up when he got signed and like all a lot of the yeah. guys like looking for a fight like marab like he blew up from looking for a fight so like it's a good way of getting in because you attract a fan base right away and it's, it's like perfect because all eyes on you and you're on a youtube channel on dana's channel and like there's a lot of views and the like the fans will like you versus like contender series they sign so many guys in one night that uh, like you might yeah. get a fight, might not so let's move on to your actual fight now mark holm uh, we mentioned he's uh, the, uh duplessis training partner did you know about him before this fight was offered to you and what do you know about him now and, and what do you think about this fight as a matchup for you uh, I didn't know who he was before the offer, but like once he would off, once he was offered, uh, like we heard he was down here because he's in Dreykus's camp, uh, and then we watched his fights, and like he's a very good fighter. Like, uh, props to him, man. Like he's put in work in this game, and uh, he, he's pretty good in the grappling side of things, and he's got not bad distance striking, and like he's good. This is a high level fight. Like this could be on a UFC prelim or something like that. Like this is very high level. Uh, but at the end of the day, like we saw a lot of holes that we could expose, uh, and we're going in there to win, and we're pretty sh confident that we can find a path to victory because, like, yeah, I'm not going to say how, but like I know mm -hmm. I'm able to beat this guy. Like I wouldn't be trying to fight this guy for a day now if I don't think I could beat him, but I know I can beat him. Well, it's a really interesting fight, and I'm excited to see it. And I think just the fact of who he is and who his training partners are is, you know. Even if he's not a good fighter, which he is, but even if he wasn't a good fighter, you winning against somebody like that, that's a huge feather in your cap and, and would really open up uh, the eyes of a lot of MMA fans around the world, which is something that you don't often get to do on a, a regional Canadian show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think this is just biggest opportunity. Like, it doesn't really get bigger for Canadian MMA. Like, there's, there's mm -hmm. some big fights, some big shows, but, like, this is... I can't think back of any regional Canadian MMA show that was any bigger than this. For anyone competing mm -hmm. hard, like this is huge. It's a fantastic card. There's a lot of great uh, talent on the unified card with you. Are there any other fights that you you're interested in that you think are going to be good fights for the evening? Uh, they're all good, man. They're all good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love Tommy's fight. I, I love the main event. I think that's going to be a good scrap. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a lot of welterweights competing, but like. I'd usually have my eyes on them, but I feel like I'm not going to be on the regional circuit after this fight. So mm -hmm. good luck with them, and they can scrap it out for regional title after. I, I want to yeah, move on. Yeah, there you go. Are you going to be staying at middleweight, you know, yet, or is that something you have to figure out? No, it's just pretty short notice. And, uh, like, I'm going to be staying at, welter at welterweight, uh, but, like, also 
I can compete at middleweight on a short notice, like opportunity like this. And we also, <laughs> and we also applied for the ultimate fighter at middleweight. So like I can compete at this weight. Like my, my main training partner is AJ. He's like mm-hmm. number one contender for the Bellator title. Like, I'm and he's huge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When you, uh, the ultimate fighter, is that for the current or an upcoming season coming up or something you applied for in the past? Uh, the upcoming season coming up, we applied for it. We had like an interview for it. It went pretty well. I don't know where it's going, but hopefully I just get to bypass that and get into UFC this Friday. So it's yeah. not something I'm thinking about much anymore. Uh, but hey, if I have to go spend five weeks in the house with other guys and scrap it out for a contract, I'll do it. So be it. Yeah. I'd like to move on to something you probably didn't expect me to bring up, but something you've done in the past year that I've really taken to, and I mentioned it to you before, I think briefly that I absolutely really, really, really like is that your, yeah. your car talk videos. Yeah. Where did, where did those come from? Where did the idea come from? And, and where do you get the ideas of, of what you're going to talk about? Uh, I was just talking with like people around me and like Prickett was one of them. He was like talking about like uh, how he watches this fitness guy named Sam Sulek and like he has these videos mm. and he and films and stuff. And then he just talks in his car and like, just rings deep to people and he's like no one does that for mma i'm like ah why not try it and then i started trying it and started doing it and it, it caught on for a bit it was pretty good i'm gonna have to like I, i've been slacking a bit in the new year i'm gonna have to do it more uh but yeah like it's, it's it's a fun thing to do and like it just opens up and makes me like more human to get shows like my more human side to like the general people because most people just look at fighters and think like they're just i don't know brutes so I guess it makes me less of a brute, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun thing I like to do. And it's, I guess it's cheaper than just going to talk to a therapist because it's just get it <laughs> on my mind out there, you know? And I, I disagree with you a little bit about you think, or you, maybe some people think that fighters are just brutes. What I think is appealing of, of what you're doing is that before you do something like this, you're just a concept, not you, Zach, but you as a mixed martial artist, right? You're a concept. They look at these fights, they see names on a piece of paper, they see a, a photo of a face or something. They see these two people go at it inside the cage, but they don't know you. They don't know your hopes. They don't know your aspirations. So when you can sort of add some context to that and make them see, have them see you as a real person, they can, hey, this guy's just like my buddy next door. This is like my brother. This is like my friend. And that really lets people sort of invest themselves in you and your success. So I think that's why people love that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It definitely brings them closer to like it's more relatable content. I find. I think that's pretty much all I have there, Zach. I'm uh, I don't really, don't really have anything else to add. Is there anything you'd like to bring up that I might have forgotten to, to mention? Nah, there's nothing, man. <laughs> So what's the rest of the week look like for you? So it's currently Tuesday, wins Thursday, fights Friday. Uh, you know, you're heading off to Toronto proper and tomorrow or the day after? Yeah. I'm staying gonna, in Niagara. Uh, I'm going to head off tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to leave with D-Marks and then we're going to go cut weight at the, uh, we're mm-hmm. going to just go see hotel. Like we, we have my own hotel, but we're just going to be there because Jazz is there and everyone's there. So going to yeah. just cut weight in that area and then go to Wayans Thursday and fuel back up and, put on the show Friday. Awesome. Well, Zach, I know a lot of fight fans are excited for this fight. It's a huge opportunity for you. I'll be watching on a UFC fight pass because I'm uh, currently not in Canada and I know a lot of people are watching. So from all the fans watching on MMA.ca, we'd like to congratulate you on your success up to this point so far and wish you the best of luck on Friday night. All right. Thank you, brother. Have a great day, man.